I was taking on these temporary jobs, and I had quite a few different ones. But I, and yeah, I could. The one that was most significant, I guess, uh, is the um, the one I had working at IBM in the mailroom. And while I was working there, I um, I found out quite a few people in the mailroom had spiritual interests. Uh, there was uh, one boy who was like into uh, Buddhism. And, but there was this other guy who used to come in from the loading dock into the mailroom who had a very peaceful quality about him. And you know, I started speaking to him about my spiritual, philosophical ideas and everything. And, and then eventually uh, he took out a book and he opened the book to a certain page and he put it before me and he said, read this. So I started reading it, you know, and it was this essay, uh, My Mind, you know, from uh, Songs of the Soul. So as I was reading that, it was just, um, you know, every word had such, you know, had such a, like a diamond clarity to it that, you know, I kind of very soon felt that the words were like just going deep inside of me or, or coming from deep inside me because it was like I felt what was being said there by Guru was is the clearest statement of my own deepest feelings. So I felt something deep inside from reading the uh, person who wrote this, who is he? You know, he said, well, he's Sri Chinmoy, you know, he's my spiritual master and you can go to classes given by one of his disciples, you know, he, he gives meditation and yoga classes. And so I immediately signed up for those and I started going to those classes and they were Saruman's classes being given up in New Rochelle. And I started going once a week and then, um, you know, I had some very nice experiences in the first week, especially I think the deep relaxation just kind of sent me off onto a, into another world. I was just kind of floating in uh, kind of a blissful paradise there. And, and then I started meditating and after the classes we had meditation and so we'd meditate on the transcendental. And uh, so, you know, I started meditating on the transcendental and you know, and then after a while, you know, started having some really nice experiences and and then Sarma, uh, gradually, she invited me to do various selfless service things at her yoga school. And I started learning how to repair stuff and then painting and doing every little task that needed to be done. I basically uh, got re-educated in just the practical ways of life just through uh, working there at the yoga center. Anyhow, after about two, two and a half months, April 13th celebration was coming up. And, uh, you know, Sarma finally, she, and when I first, when I first started taking the classes with Sarma, I actually, I, you know, I was still, I had long hair, you know, of course, and, and occasionally was smoking and things like that. And of course I wasn't a vegetarian, and like most people weren't. And, uh, you know, but I found it very easy to give up all those things, you know. I remember in particular, I was working in the Bronx Zoo, and Sarma said, uh, while I was working there, I had a temporary job there. She said, well, yeah, you know, you know if you want to uh, meet Sri Chinwa, you know, you have to give up smoking. So I remember just throwing out my cigarettes and going, going to work that day. And I remember, like, every time I got feeling for a cigarette, I would just like, you know, kind of look at it and follow it until it sort of died away. And it was just like these urges rose up, but they also disappeared if you didn't pay attention to them. So that was an interesting education in just how getting over a bad habit. And of course, you know, giving up meat was pretty easy. And so she said, well, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, I can ask, I can ask Sri Chinmoy if you can come to the April celebration. And uh, so, you know, she asked her if I could come and she came and said that he said it was okay for me to go. So I'd never seen Guru before. I'd 
you know, I, even though I'd been at Sarma's about a couple of months there. But um, so, you know, I got my, my best whites, which maybe weren't quite right white, you know. And uh, Sarma drove down there, I think, and I, I went down with her. And, and I remember, you know, it was just, uh, I, I'm sure many, you know, new disciples feel, and it was the same way back then. It's just like entering into a whole different universe of people where people behaved in different ways than you were accustomed to people behaving, even in those early days. I mean, it was, there was a, a kind of, uh, I guess, I don't know what you'd call it, respect at least, you know, some kind of you know, bond, some kind of strong feeling that you felt between all the people. And there was kind of a harmony that existed where everybody was working together and, and kind of, you know, kind of working, um, you know, bring, bringing, making these celebrations really happen. Back then, it, we, I, I was only one day that I went. I just went to the April 13th. And, you know, I just remember being very, very impressed by all the performances. Actually, Ma Vishnu was there. Um, I remember meeting him on the steps, and he was so kind and humble, you know. You hardly know that he was like a big famous uh, musician or anything. But he, and he had naturally short hair, and he was wearing whites. So he blended in very nicely with the other disciples. And he performed, and grew, gave a very deep meditation before he performed. And uh, so, and I just remember just being overwhelmed by all the, the kindness of everybody and, and the, the harmony in the situation. And then afterwards, and, and also, you know, just grew. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> what can you <he> say? <laughs> I really can't even describe. Uh, just, you know, who can describe? It's beyond words. But um, anyhow, down, when we, after the meditation, we went downstairs to eat something. And uh, so Guru Sarva introduced me to Guru, and she said, oh, this is uh, my, one of my new students. This is uh, Sal, you know, and he's interested in being a disciple. And, uh, and you know, Guru, you know how Guru, like, he kind of looks at you, and he's just, like, looking, you know, looking through you, and, and you know, he didn't say much right then. It's just, you know, maybe he said, very good. And I think, oh, and he asked me what I did, and I don't, I don't know what I told him I did, I think, because I didn't really do anything. <laughs> it's hard to really give a... I probably gave some kind of confused answer, you know, because I just did a lot of different things. So, but that was my first meeting with Guru. And, um, you know, I mean, it was, maybe it wasn't a lot that happened outwardly, but there was, you know, a lot that happened inwardly, you know, and of course I continued going, consistent, you know, whenever I could go whenever I could. Because I had a lot that I had to, uh, you know, transform in my nature at that point, you know, after having, uh, you know, the kind of lifestyle that I had for so many years, I'm sure. Guru could see that, well, this, you could see that I had a, a ways to go before I'd be fully prepared to, uh, to uh, fully embrace, uh, you know, the every aspect of his path, you know, or what